Hey y'all, my name's Trix. Uh, I skate for Texas Roller Girls as a Texas Chainsaw and as a Hunter Town Heartbreaker, and today I'm gonna be talking about stand and stuff. <laughs> down into six parts for you okay the first one is going to be forward and backward steps um, which is just what it sounds like the second is going to be side to side which is also just what it sounds like um, step three is going to be grapevine which is your side to side step but with a crossover in the middle so your feet are going to do this kind of motion all right number four is the shuffle which is your side to side motion your side to side stepping but making sure that your feet meet after each step. Um, number five is quick steps, which is just using your side to side steps and stepping in place very quickly, which helps build your agility, all right? And then number six is balancing on one foot, um, which is easier than it sounds, I promise. Make sure you can do all of these movements off skates before you can try to do them on skates, I would recommend. Um, and if you're gonna be doing them on a hard surface, if you're struggling on the pavement or you're struggling on your floors, um, go ahead and try and practice these on grass, carpet, or a yoga mat until you feel more comfortable. I personally am using a yoga mat um, so that my downstairs neighbors, neighbors don't want to kill me. So first things first, we're gonna start with the forward and backward. It just looks like this, right? You're simply taking a step forward, right? Just what it sounded like, stepping backwards, just the same. Okay, first you're gonna wanna go back to Anita's video and reference the form that she tells you to use in that one um, because that's also gonna apply to this. You can do all of these motions stood straight up, but the thing is if you lose your balance and you're stood straight up, um, you'll just fall down and it'll really hurt because none of your body will be prepared for that impact, right? Most of these movements you're gonna wanna do in a kind of mostly seated position so that way, if you do lose your balance and start to tip, all of the muscles that you need to catch you are already kind of awake and know where we're at. Also, the lower you are, it's less far to fall, so it'll hurt less. If you're on a surface that's less sticky than a yoga mat, you're gonna have a little bit of this happening, okay? The way you negate that is by doing very small plows. So you learned how to do a plow in a previous video, you're gonna do that. Um, you're gonna engage the same muscles and tighten the same way, but you don't necessarily need to be able to see that you're plowing, right? It's just turning on those stabilizers, right? So if I'm wobbling, right, I'm gonna wanna push my, out, push my weight out to stabilize, right? Just like you would a plow and it'll hold you. And if you're going backwards and you're rolling back and forth, right, just, shift your weight as if you were doing a back plow, okay? Side to side, again, what it sounds like. There you go. So you wanna get in your derby stance, right? It's as simple as showing that you can step continuously from one side to the other. And these are also The next thing you're gonna do is grapevine, which is that crossover. This one specifically, if you've never done it before or if you're having trouble, um, definitely do it on a yoga mat, carpet, grass, whatever, because it takes a minute to get used to all of this padding being in your way, right? Most people can do a grapevine fairly easily. It's not a terribly complex motion, but you have to do extra stuff and make extra compensation for your knee pads, your toe stops, your wheels. It's just a whole bunch of stuff that you haven't had to account for before. So try doing it in a scenario where you're not going to roll very much until you have that stability and the awareness of like how far around you have to bring one foot or the other foot around the other, right? And make sure your hips are used to that motion too. Because you don't want to get tangled right in your own knee pads just because you didn't know like that your hip can't quite do this motion yet, right? But here's the great fine. You do it around the back too, right? Number four is the shuffle, which is just you're moving side to side in that side step in a more fluid version, right? 
and it's just showing your ability to get from point A to point B efficiently. This one's definitely you're gonna need to be low, right? If you can touch your feet and do it, awesome. Keep your head level, right? Right, you can do it with a leap, you can kind of do it, you wanna, it doesn't matter if you're jumping, if you feel like you're jumping, as long as all of your wheels on each foot are leaving the ground, okay? And you can work on this, if you get, if you get really good at this, you can level up by doing it quicker and quicker. You can also level up by doing it slow, okay? Right, it's like a super dramatic version of the motion. And this will help to build the bigger muscles that you're using in your legs, as well as the smaller muscles that are stabilizing you down here, right? Okay, and then the fast. And then after that, we have quick steps which is same principles, just little baby steps, okay? First things first, you wanna make sure you can do it uh, without moving from side to side. So it's just this. You know, kind of what you do if you were super excited to see someone you haven't seen in a really long time, like ah, okay? Um, and then you're gonna graduate up until you can do, do the motion side to side, right? And these are those, you're gonna be continuously reassessing where you're rolling and how you're rolling and doing angle adjustments of your feet and weight adjustments uh, as you get the feel of it, right? And that's part of why doing it on a surface where you're not gonna just roll out really quickly can be helpful. All right, now I have step six, which is pretty straightforward. It's just balance on one foot. But I like that it's included with these because most of these at some point while you're working on them, you are balancing on one foot, so it's important. But all of these, if you're drilling them, are gonna help build up all of the muscles and the stabilization and the instincts and just create the stability that you need to balance on one foot for 30 seconds on skates. Ready? And then you don't even have to have your foot anywhere in particular, just off the ground. Um, I highly recommend staring at a fixed point and then you can just relax. So this is my leg straight, this leg is straight, banana legs, whatever. This is my leg slightly bent. You're going to want a soft knee as you're balancing because that'll keep the parts of your knee that you need to keep stable in this position from locking up. If you're stood straight up, uh, none of them are available because they're already working on other things to stabilize you. If they're here, they're kind of, you know, poised and ready for action, <laughs> right? So you're gonna do this, stay, and then do both feet, okay? Um, all of these are gonna be, uh, if you're going into derby, they're gonna be in your drills, so you might as well be prepared for that. Um, if you're just learning to skate so that you can jam skate, if you're just learning to skate so you can park skate, if you want to distance skate, whatever type of skating you want to do, all of these are gonna help, and all of these, if you drill them, are gonna make you a safer skater, much less likely to injure your ankles, which is a very common injury on skates, right? If you ask a seasoned skater how they feel when they first get back from not skating for a long time, it's usually jelly legs, which is because all of these little stabilizing muscles in your ankles and your feet atrophy really quickly. Um, because we don't use them normally, but you need them for skating and you need them to be safe on skates. So go out, go forth into the world, <laughs> practice these. Then uh, I can't wait to see your videos online of you dancing and park skating and just tearing it up on four wheels, eight wheels even. <laughs> Thanks y'all.